Today, we're going to talk about Clean Vision or ticker CLNV. Now, their goal is investing in the future of clean energy to help save the environment and also to limit the amount of waste product or plastics going into our oceans. So it's really important to know that environmental sustainability is a big issue. It's a huge sector. A lot of money is designated towards it um, from the private and public sector, but also from nations that especially have a big issue like India, for example. Now, there are key players in the game that really back clean vision. Okay, and we'll get to them in a moment. Very highly accredited people, prestigious individuals that I want to mention, really why I got involved with clean vision itself. So this might not be your thing. This might not be your topic or your, your expertise here. And it wasn't for me either. There's a lot of learning here. There's a lot of realization that, hey, not only are plastics all in our oceans, but human beings are actually consuming more plastics. And there's more, you know, particles found in our respiratory system that we're digesting. So this is a real big issue. Now, what separates Clean Vision from any other company? They have PCNs or plastic conversion networks set up to that you can essentially take plastic and through chemical recycling, able to produce clean hydrogen. Now, that's very important because everyone wants to talk about the energy boom, whether it's going to be wind or solar. But those are two inconsistent forms of energy because, one, we know if there's no wind, you're not producing anything. When it comes to solar panels, if there's no sun, that's an issue. And also uh, to be able to store that energy, too. Now, we don't take into fact that there could be dust or debris or things that actually, you know, limit the amount of energy taken in. So those two are inconsistent. When it comes to hydrogen, it's able to operate 24-7 and especially clean hydrogen, which is very important. And that's what they do. CLNV does very well. So as we go down and we're just looking through the website, I think it's visually appealing. It's very easy to learn and say that, hey, there is this heightened sense of urgency to transition away from a carbon-based economy, clean energy, waste transformation, clean fuel for transportation, right? That's even part of this administration we have currently where they're trying to really push EV. Now, whether or not, you know, the back end of that is good for the environment, that's not the purpose. We're just talking about uh, just polluting from transportation emissions. Now, as we go down, we see the mission is to define leading edge tech solutions to answer the global need for clean energy and issues related to the renewable waste management as we transition to the carbon free future. Now, I don't think this is going to happen overnight. I don't think this is going to be a two, three month thing or even a six to 12 month thing. I think it's two, three decades down the line. Companies are eventually going to take the step and move towards green. Same thing with other nations. Maybe it'll start in smaller European nations. It won't be us first, but whoever takes that lead lead is ultimately going to have an advantage long term. Okay. And what I see with Clean Vision is I think they're the leading in this sector. I think they are a company that's taken the initiative, they're taking those first steps, and they could definitely be a dominant force when it comes to this environmental sustainability and especially waste management. So as we go down, everyone wants to know, well, is there any money in here? You know, who's backing this? And of course, yes, there is definitely a lot of money that's put towards this issue here. And we see Dina Powell McCormick, who's global head of sustainability and inclusive growth at Goldman Sachs. So they want the public and the private sector to get invested in here. You know, they want to collaborate with their clients and really drive capital towards this market-based climate solutions. And we see they wrote a 50-page PDF here on the task force climate-related financial disclosures, the Excel accelerating transition. And one of the key things I see right here is to build a more sustainable planet will require nothing less. And they estimate 56 trillion in green infrastructure investments is needed to reach a net zero economy by 2050. That's around 20, 30 years from now. So that lines up in my two to three decades. There's a lot of money, a lot of funding and a lot of desire here from not only companies, but just individuals that are passionate about our environment, but nations as a whole. Like I said, India has the worst pollution, the worst conditions environmentally. So that's why they're putting the most money towards it. So that's definitely significant. Now, as we go back really quick, I know that there is a lot more we can dive into. We know that they, as a company, want to acquire other businesses and technology that will have an impact on the green economy. That's great because we want to see they're expanding. They're having multiple sources of revenue or income here. So that's great that Clean Vision has that mentality to expand and grow as a company. Now, if we want to go and look at this partnership here, I think it's very important here, Arizona State University. Basically, I like to compare it to UCLA and medicine or Johns Hopkins and medicine, right? They put a lot of funding there, a lot of energy and time is 
pumped into this specific sector of medicine, the health and wellness sector, because that's what their expertise is. That's where their strong points are. Okay. With ASU, theirs is environmental sustainability, is waste management. So they have a 50 million plastic to hydrogen facility, the first of its kind on its campus. Now, I really suggest you look into the Robin Milne Walton Sustainability Solutions Service. They are a huge you know, organization um, that has incredible backing, really smart, intelligent, highly accredited individuals, which takes us into our next point here, which they say clean seas will establish the facility and the Rob Melanie Walton solution service will provide access to its network of 800 global future scientists and scholars, as well as the facilitation within the ASU based headquarters. So they're networking, they're getting all the people that are really involved in this specific issue that care a lot about it, that is able to raise money and get funding to fix these issues to help save our environment and our oceans. And we see here, Mike Dor now, this is a key point of interest here, and we'll get to him in a moment. But he says, what we're not trying to do is sustain the flow of plastic materials. He's the director and chair of the solution service. So that flow that needs to end, and neither of us at the Walton or Clean Seas want a landfill to be the destination of plastic waste. Okay, so they want to you know, source plastic waste from feedstock from the Phoenix metro region and redirect from landfills and incinerators. Okay, then it will be converted to the recycled content plastic and clean seas proprietary clean hydrogen product. So you're taking all this waste from landfills that are going into the oceans and you're breaking it down by a chemical process to create clean energy. That's the key here. Now, when you look at Mike Dorsey, right, he is just the cream of the crop when it comes to this, right? He is the chair of the Robin Melanie Walton Sustainability Solutions Service, okay? Not only that, I mean, he's a University of Michigan grad, Yale, Johns Hopkins master's, recognized as an expert on sustainability, finance, renewable energy, and environmental matters. I mean, it doesn't get any better than Mike Dorsey. The guy's going all over the world globally to speak at conferences, COP12, COP27, whichever it is. He's going in India for two weeks to talk about the environmental issues, how we can fix them, what we need to do. This is a guy who's the leading force or the driving force for this problem. And Clean Vision is now partnered with the fund that he happens to be the chair of, that he happens to have the most say in. Now, he is also a board of director on Clean Vision, which is fantastic. Okay, this is amazing. This is exactly what you want to see. Okay, and he's, like I said, highly accredited as, as you know, as best as they come, basically. And I'm trying to scroll down and find where it was. But yeah, right here. So he was... President William Jefferson Clinton's Council on Sustainability Development. Okay, he was a member of Senator Barack Obama's Energy and Environmental Presidential Campaign Team. This guy is all over the place. Okay, writes for Wall Street Journal. The list goes on, right? I could talk all day about him. So to have a guy like that who's looked at in this light as being, hey, th this is one of the top guys in the world to talk about these issues, and he's on the board of CLNV, he's partnered with them, he put a 50, helped put a $50 million plant on ASU's campus, this is a very big deal. Okay, so CLNV, they have the backing, they have the support, they have the best in the business, okay, and they have something that is proprietary and it works right? You're forming plastic into clean energy that could operate 24 seven. So we talk about right an energy boom, you know, where's it going to come from? I don't think it's going to be wind or solar. I think it's going to be hydrogen. I really do. Taking a look at some of the most recent press releases, we see that they acquired majority stake in Morocco based plant here. And also this company that we mentioned 51% of this energy group. I um, mean, the agreement basically says that they are going to have a commercial scale pyrolysis facility that was previously announced back in April. So um, this is incredible here. They're going to pay 6.5 million to control interest. And then we're going to see, I believe, greater than 10,000 tons ready to be converted into clean, low sulfur fuels, hydrogen, and has an offtake agreement with local oil and gas distributors. So this is very cool. The key here is that they continue to expand and they have specific areas in which they want to build these plants that are going to streamline or get the best results, right? So where are they going to be able to get the best bang for their buck? Where are they going to be able to make the biggest difference? Okay. It's specific locations. Now, I don't know where they're going to put them and for what reason, um, but that's again, the company's job and it seems like they know what they're doing. So again, this is a PCN 
you know, facility. And when we go and actually look at how the plastic conversion network operates, you know, this, this part of the, the website goes fully in depth and you see the proprietary system, how it works, how it functions, the solution, pyrolysis itself. You know, there's a lot here, you know, what it outputs and whatnot. So this is very cool. It's a big learning experience for me. It's something that's completely outside my knowledge. I'm not an environmental guy. I'm not a sustainability expert. I don't know really anything about this, but it's very cool. It's very well structured and put together. Um, so I'm very excited to see how this plays out. Um, we're also taking a look here at the Michigan facility, 45,000 square foot facility here, um, which is incredible. $20 million budget here. Um, we saw this was back in January. This is about a week and a half ago, give or take. So they're partnered with New Way and Go Recycle Center for their fourth uh, project here, which is incredible. It's more expansions, it's more growth from the business side, and also it's making a greater impact the more they build. Okay, the key here, and what I mentioned before, is this energy boom. Is it going to be wind or solar? I don't think so because those are inconsistent. Hydrogen operates 24 7. So that's really why I'm so, you know, locked into this is hydrogen could definitely be the future. Okay, moving on, we see more. Uh, basically the same thing, you know, another $20 million Massachusetts co-location that they have here. Um, there's just a lot of similarities here. You know, this one's producing 50, 50 tons per day. This one wants to do X amount. You know, they're trying to grow. They're trying to continue to put more plants here. I think that's really, you know, the key here when you're reading through these, you know, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to get, you know, too crazy into detail, but you could see that they're definitely making progress. This was back in November. We saw all the way they update us from April. Now, now, January, more articles are dropping, more you know plants are being built, they're getting funding from all over. So it's a great sign to see that there's growth and there's consistency um, with updating the shareholders here. Okay, um, we see that they built uh, this $50 million plant here, ASU, um, which we saw was the Rob Melanie Walton uh, Sustainability Solutions here. And what was really cool is uh, the Phoenix actually uh, said that they were going to unlock more than 160 million in recycling related annual economic activity. So what does that mean? We'll get to that in a moment. So they invested 50 million in the project, CSA, and then they said they're going to divert more than 850,000 tons of plastic waste in its two and a half decade span. And the city of Phoenix 2050 goal for zero waste. So I was thinking about that. I was like, well, what is the city of Phoenix going to do? And I looked here and I saw Arizona governor signs advanced recycling bill. Okay, they are a part of that. And they're basically just 25% of the recoverable plastics in the state into new products using the recycling techniques could generate $164 million in economic output. So by using their method or their ability to recycle the plastic, that's going to generate a ton of revenue uh, for the state and for certain cities within that state. So that is incredible. That's amazing. So it's nations and also states within that nation that are basically, you know, taking that lead. If it's Arizona, maybe they put a lot of funding into this. And that clearly we see here is they're very pro sustainability. They're pro, you know, clean energy and renewable energy sources. So not only is it benefiting clean vision as a company, they're getting the money, they're getting funding, they're helping helping the environment, but they're also helping the cities within. They're probably getting subsidized or definitely getting incentivized to do so, right? So this is awesome. And that's, again, following the goals of that you know state or that nation. That's who you have to look for is what are their goals? You're not going to go to a city or state that has you know no care in mind, no funding for this, but you see right here, they're 2050 goals for zero waste. So they're taking the steps. They want to be carbon neutral here. OK, so this is awesome. This is great. It's showing the same thing that we mentioned before. Back in November, we see early November. Now they have the 50 million facility, very highly accredited team there. And now as we move forward, you know, we see the, the hybrid fuel cell stack architect and prototype that they had designed. And again, don't, you know, expect me to give you this whole big breakdown of how it works. I don't know, um, but I'm going to give you, you know, the links and everything where you could read it yourself. But um, it's really cool. You know, it's just energy storage module that supports, you know, in internal thermal survival architect for sub-zero operations. Okay. And it could provide parallel with solar and wind systems. Uh, very cool. Again, very, very cool. Um, and yeah, it, it just goes to show that they're different um, and that they're definitely taking that stance, which not many companies seem to be doing this. Okay. We see here, I believe this is in India. 
Yeah, so Clean Seas India commissions its plastic waste to energy facility, uh, process generates low sulfur fuels and clean hydrogen. So it's basically the same thing, kind of regurgitated, you know, all across the board. If it's India, it's Morocco, it's Massachusetts, it's Michigan, it's, you know, it's all over, right? So hopefully you, you see the common, uh, you know, denominator here is just building plants, growing, expanding, finding states or certain, you know, areas that the nations are going to put a lot of money into support it, you know, incentivize it, things of that nature. So taking a look at the daily chart, this is the only view I'm going to show you for clean vision. I'm not going to go into the five or the 15 and keep showing you the same thing in, in different views. This is what I'm looking at on the daily. It's really nice, like a bilateral triangle or a slight rising wedge. I really don't want to say it's a rising wedge. It's just higher lows, lower highs. We have a convergent point. It looks really strong. And overall, we're trying to break above this trend line. So Pretty much, you know, I'm not trying to guess here. We could see it go up. We could see it go down. There are definitely two options here. You know, it's not just one way. Um, but really what I'm focused on the most here, um, in my opinion, would be this high right at around 10 cents. So I think if we're able to clear 10 cents here and really break out, there is a possibility we see upside of around a quarter. OK, but really, that's just on a short term view. If you're looking long term to let it fully develop, fully play out, this could be a multi dollar stock without a question. Not right now, not in the next month or two or anything like that, but definitely, you know, has the ability you know, to make some big moves. Now, in terms of short interest, I know a lot of people want to know, you know, is this highly shorted? I believe it definitely is shorted behind the scenes. I don't know the data. I don't have the numbers. I'm just being transparent there. Um, but if there is, you know, a, a will and a want and a, and a, you know, a desire to fight back and possibly offer, you know, some sort of dividend like we've seen in the past, there's so many companies, GNS, you know, we've seen HLBZ, you know, so many people, GTI, CRTD, Finger, they're all fighting back. They're all doing their own thing. So I don't know if that's clean visions you know uh outlook or if that's something they want to do um not to my knowledge but either way um i think that you know fighting back or you know trying to get a, a grip on the situation as to how many shares are actually out there you know what's sort of circulating behind the scenes that would be a good start too if there is a high short interest here but that's really not the strong point i don't really know too much about that so either way that was my overview on clean vision i will leave all the links in the description i hope this was a little bit of an educational video. But either way, I'm super excited about this company. I think that it has massive growth potential, especially, you know, if some big boy is going to buy it out in the future, it could easily be a multi-dollar stock. So not in the next month, not in the next week, but definitely, you know, looking long-term from an investment mindset, I think you have something special here. So keep updated for the press releases, keep updated, to see how they're going to continue to expand and if they get, you know, government contracts or anything big like that moving forward. But that's my overview on Clean Vision. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.